Hey, what's going on, Creality K1 owners? This is Covenant Custom, and today I'm going to be going over the quick and easy process of how I get my beds as close to level as possible on these K1s. It's not going to require any modification, shims, or removing of panels, so to start, I'm going to turn on my machine and make my way over to the slicer. After giving my build play the quirky name, I'm going to make my way to the top menu and select device. On the left-hand side, you'll find an additional menu, which you'll scroll down until you select Tune. This is your bed mesh calibration page, and you're going to want to start by homing all and then calibrating. The range of 0.3262 was previously performed with a heated chamber. You'll see that without heating the chamber, you're going to receive drastically different results. To understand what adjustments need to be made, you're first going to need to understand this bed mesh graph. With the default orientation that's presented, the X will be the front of the machine and the Y will be the right hand side. With a range of 0.6040 under a cold chamber, I'm going to want to introduce thermal expansion so that I can account for any changes that occur while the bed is at the appropriate temp. Once your chamber has reached a sufficient temperature for the material you're going to be melting, you can select Tune and go back to recalibrate. On the home screen, you'll find the console, which is providing the various data points with the active probing sequence that is occurring during the bed mesh. With a heat soak bed mesh complete, you'll see that the left and right front corners are still lower than the rear. To address this, I'll take set of pliers and I'll turn the lead screws one click clockwise, jumping one tooth on the belt down in the lower chamber. There will be a bit of resistance, but you'll turn past this until it finds its position on the next tooth. You'll see that the range has already improved to 0.4744 from the previous 0.6040 from just the heat soak alone. Let's perform another bed mesh. Taking a look at our results, it has improved to a point that all three locations for the Z axis are in a relative position. But let's just say that your bed mesh is high in one location. As it's supposed to be equivalent across the board, I'm going to turn the lead screw on the right front, one click clockwise, so that I can produce those results. You'll see that the right front is much higher and it has produced a range of 0.7123. In order to address this, I'm going to have to adjust the right front lead screw one click down. To do this, you're just going to reverse the process and you're going to turn the collar on your lead screw for that specific corner counterclockwise. And by doing that, I should be able to return to the range that I had received before. I'll perform a bed mesh calibration to see what the results provide. Now I've brought it down to 0.3539, which isn't exactly what it was at prior, but I wanted to be able to show you the results if you had to step back in the opposite direction. Considering this is a K1 Max in stock configuration with a factory plate, I'd say that 0.3539 is acceptable. And after performing a two hour print, you'll see that it's drastically improved over the initial. This further proves the effects of thermal expansion and the importance of taking account for it during your bed leveling process. As our full bed mesh now provides a range of 0.2373, it is important to note that the rear Z lead screw will always be your control as it is attached to the motor and you'll only adjust the front two. As always, thanks for tuning in and showing some support. If this information was helpful to you or you'd simply like to support the channel, check out the coffee link in the description below. Just remember every like, comment, and subscribe will always be more than enough. Look forward to catching you next time and until then, happy printing.